I'm Anna Laura, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about something I love, The Sims. I was first introduced to the game when I was in 8th grade, and I've continued to play ever since. The first Sims game was developed by Maxis and published by Electronic Arts in the year 2000. Originally nicknamed an interactive dollhouse by the game's creator, Will Wright, the franchise has continued to grow. The Sims is primarily a life simulation, where you create characters and control their wants and needs. The game also encompasses aspects of architecture and design. The main reason I love The Sims so much is because of what I can create in it. One of my favorite houses is my Biltmore Mansion, which I built after being inspired by the real Biltmore House in Asheville, North Carolina. I've also built concept homes like this completely symmetrical duplex, and I like finding blueprints for modern homes and trying to build them to scale as well. I love all of the intricacies of the game and everything I can do in it. I am the creator, the controller, and the builder. Anything I want, I can do in The Sims. Now at this point, I think I've made it pretty obvious that I enjoy this game, but there has to be some deeper reason why I keep coming back to it, right? Well, like a lot of things in life, there's a theory for that. Introducing Uses and Gratification Theory, created by Elihu Katz, Jay Blumler, and Michael Gurevich in 1974. This theory aims to explain why people seek certain media and what gratification they receive from consuming it. To better understand this theory and to figure out why I love The Sims so much, I've created guides on the Sim forms of Katz, Blumler, and Gurevich. And because I physically could not resist a name with such an obvious pun, here's Dr. Katz hanging out with a whole bunch of cats. Okay, moving on into uses and gratifications theory. There are five aspects of the model that are vital to the theory. Number one, the audience is conceived of as active. The audience is goal-directed, and they actively seek content. Other theories conceive of audience members as passive, whereas uses and gratifications determines them to be deliberate and intentional in their media usage. Number two. Much initiative in linking need gratification and media choice lies with the audience member. The audience uses the media instead of being used by the media. This is an important distinction. Number three, the media compete with other sources of need satisfaction. There are a wide range of human needs and need fulfillment varies on activity. Number four, many of the goals of mass media use can be derived from data supplied by individual audience members. Audience self-reports identify what the media is being used for. And number five, value judgments about the cultural significance of mass communication should be suspended while audience orientations are explored on their own terms. From the researcher's perspective, remain unbiased and maintain objectivity. The categories of gratification were established in 1972 by McQuail, Blumler, and Brown. The four categories are as follows. Number one, diversion. This includes escape from the constraints of routine and the burdens of problems and emotional release. Number two, personal relationships. This includes substitute companionship as well as social utility. Number three, personal identity. This includes personal reference, reality exploration, and value reinforcement. And number four, surveillance. This encompasses awareness of physical danger and visibility of sources of power in society. Katz, Blumler, and Gurevich go on to say, one may postulate that it is the combined product of psychological dispositions, sociological factors, and environmental conditions that determines the specific uses of the media by members of the audience. 
In other words, every audience member will use media in their own specific way. In my case, every Sims player may play the game for different reasons. For me personally, my gratifications align with diversion, personal relationships, and personal identity. For diversion, I will sometimes play The Sims if I'm feeling stressed out, because I'm always in control when I play the game. This is an escape mechanism. Personal relationships applies to me in the form of substitute companionship. You can create anyone you want in The Sims, from friends, family, or even celebrities. My Sims interact with whoever I want them to. And lastly, personal identity. Recall that one of the aspects of personal identity is reality exploration. What better way is there to explore reality than to create your own? I can play The Sims when I'm stressed out, if I'm feeling lonely, or if I'm just feeling creative. The Sims is my outlet for however I'm feeling, and for that, I'll play forever.